Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Nickel28. I have Anthony Molesky and I have Martin Vidra. How are you today? Great, Tracy. Thanks for having us on. Always enjoy catching up. Yeah, well, it's a wonderful day. Yes, let's just start at the top here. Nickel 28's moved up, what, 30% in the last month? Yeah, look, it's been a great, a great tear. I mean, even today, I saw it was trading above $1.30. Uh, I think that's really reflected in the fact that the market has become more interested in nickel as we've seen, you know, that, that nickel price today touch 1060. So, you know, we're one of the very few, if not only uh, producing pure play nickel uh, equities on the TSX. So, you know, if you want nickel exposure, you want leverage, you know, and you want that in a, in a producer, then we're kind of the one stop shop there. All of you EV investors out there, every key word you want to hear is here, nickel and cobalt. So perhaps Martin, you give us an update on the project and how it's going, please. Okay. Thanks, Tracy. You know, the project is, is running great. We expect to, uh, uh, release our full year results for year ending 2021, where the uh, production of uh, our flagship operation in Ramu, Papua New Guinea will have once again reached basically nameplate capacity for the fifth year in a row, which is absolutely wonderful in this world. It's, a, it's the only HPAL operation in the world that has been running at design capacity. So we're talking about 32,000 tons of, of nickel and about 3,000 tons of cobalt in a form too that the battery industry is just really hungry for. It's, a, it's called MHP or a mixed hydroxide product. And, and it is really becoming the key ingredient of choice for the battery industry. So we're really excited. And, and 2022 looks, off to be, looks to be off to a great start again uh, with production just coming along. So we're quite happy with that asset. And of course, Anthony, love an update from you. We know you know how to speak uh, investment audience language. Yeah, I, I think the key point here is uh, when the project was funded and financed, our partner MCC, who, who's just done a, a really great job operating this, you know, this project, you know, as well as anyone in the world, anywhere at any time, uh, lent us money, and uh, they did it in two tranches. We paid back that first tranche, so we now have free cash flow. We've been buying back shares in the market. Uh, we'll continue to do that, and uh, the second tranche. You know, we'll take another, depending on the nickel price, you know, two years to repay or less just depends on the nickel price. It's highly geared to that price. And you can work that out if you go look at our guidance. And, you know, when when that is paid back, you know, you could be looking at anywhere from 40 to 60 million dollars U.S. a year free cash flow at, at current prices. And, you know, we intend to return the overwhelming majority of that as a dividend. So this is the ultimate vehicle. Uh, it, you know, it's not 10 years away from permitting. In actual fact, we've been producing for seven or eight years now. We are the largest producer of MHP in the world. And, you know, there's a good chance if you're driving an electric vehicle, you have our MHP in that battery. So I'm going to ask you a question that I already know how you're going to answer, but I'm going to throw it out there anywhere anyway, which is, Anthony, is it too late to buy the stock? Like I said, you've increased dramatically here in the last 60 days. No, I, I don't think so. Um, but of course, uh, whether or not you buy the stock in large part, you know, kind of depends on what you think about the price of nickel, you know, and that's the great thing about the stock. If you think nickel's going up, staying here, it's a great buy. If you think for some reason nickel's going to have a huge sell-off, well, then it's not. And so, you know, we've, we've waded through, you know, the decade long um, journey from exploration to production. We're through that journey now. And it's really about continuing to produce at nameplate or above, which we have, and then you need to plug in, meaning the investor just needs to plug in what they think is going to happen in nickel. And, you know, from there, you can see how expensive or cheap we are. And, and myself, I think we're cheap. You know, I'm, uh, I think I'm the largest shareholder owning roughly, you know, nine or 10% of the company. So I'm, I'm pretty bullish. I think I also heard management's buying back shares. Is that correct? That's correct. We've been buying back shares now for a number of months. I, I can't remember exactly how long it's disclosed in the quarterly. Um, but yeah, we're, we're buying back shares and we'll continue to do that. And what should we anticipate as shareholders in the next upcoming quarter? I think you touched on that, Martin. Perhaps you'd like to uh, add a note or two. Well, I think just from the production side, I think you can expect another strong quarter of, of uh, uh, nameplate production. And, and the other thing we're seeing is not only is the nickel price appreciating, the cobalt price is appreciating significantly. It's trading at the highest level since 2018. 
which really helps uh, generate extra cash, as, as Anthony says. So it offsets our costs. So I think from a production point of view, you're going to see strong production at, at, at costs that are consistent with what we've been reporting over the last eight, 12 quarters. And of course, you heard it here, production. We've got nickel and cobalt. Thank you both for joining us today. That's nickel 28 on the TSX. Thanks a lot, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy.